after my after my junior year summer, so after I got back from from Jupiter, I started working out like five times a day, and uh, I put up. I grew like 80, 80 pounds in every every category of lifting. You working out five times a day? Yeah, or five times a week. Sorry, my bad. What, well, dude? I was like, this guy's about to. <laughs> we were about to. <laughs> Yeah, bro, yeah. that'd have been a good one. Jackson, <laughs> five times a day, buddy. We would have shocked the baseball world, bro. Hey everybody, it's your coach. I'm here with my man, Jackson. Jackson, where are you from? Uh, Sora, Oklahoma. Show. <laughs> I love it. Coach HP. HP, I like it, what man. a vibe. You got a yeah, great vibe so going on. We're vibe. happy we can meet great you. Great energy. Three, two, one, boom, and we're on. Bro, so many questions to ask you. The number one question anybody should ever ask you is, how's the hair? The hair? <laughs> the hair's great. The, great. the hair's great. Now, let me ask you a question, because I noticed the brother has long hair, too. Is that like a family mm -hmm. decision? I think we're just trying to grow it as long as we can. Uh <laughs> Obviously, my dad doesn't have it anymore, so I'm trying a different look. Dude, I, I got to, as, as, as a guy in the same boat as your dad, I appreciate it. And you're probably one of the few guys rocking it that long anyway. What do you, do you have to hit it with conditioner or anything like that or no? I try to take care of it. I try to take care of it. So, uh, yeah, shampoo and conditioner every single day. Ethan has a little bit different of a, of a look on it. He kind of just, I don't even know if he watches it, just kind of. That's whatever it wants. He goes so, all natural. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I noticed when when I was with with John Jay, he told me your your family has a podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my mom and my dad do a, a podcast called Table Forty. Uh, it's like about everyone's faith, and uh, they do it with professional athletes. So uh, it's pretty neat. Growing up in that environment, bro, did you always feel that Jesus was in your life? Mm hmm. Uh, Jesus has always been an important part of my life and my family's life, and it's kind of how we how we base our uh, how we base our family around um, around Him and, uh, and our decisions. So uh, yeah, definitely. Do you have a prayer before every? Uh, first of all, when you see us Latin dudes hit the cross every time, right? Are mm. you like, oh, I should do that? Or you guys know, guys, that doesn't work? Or what's your vibe on that? Um, I, I always pray before every at bat, but uh, no. I'm, I'm used to it, but yeah, I pray before every bat kind of gets me in a, in a good state of mind before I go to the play. You do it on deck? You do it in the, before? What do you do? Mm -hmm. Um, as I'm walking up to the play. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Every, every at bat. When did you start doing that? Probably two or three summers ago. Yep. Kind of, kind of kept it, uh, my routine. So uh, it, it's been working. Bro, I see, when I see your situation, I see it so interesting because when I met you, I had no idea who anybody was. I don't know who any, I didn't know anybody. Right. But I, what I liked about you is that you're, you're one of the few guys now, bro, that your game actually speaks other than the hair speaks more than, than your swag. You know what I'm saying? Like you have a real humble approach to your game, dude. Now I only got to see you probably play two games and then like a BP thing. So I didn't get to see your whole season, man. Have you always been like that? Were you more flashier when you were younger? Did you change that? Um, I've always been just kind of like who I am. I never tried to try to be someone else. And um, I was never the flashiest player. I kind of just always enjoyed playing and trying to um, be the hardest player and, and try to um, just let my game speak for itself. So when we look at guys like you, bro, that, that actually hit almost 700, which is crazy, bro. You're like a video. You're playing a video game this year. You're playing. <laughs> you're playing a video game, bro. First of all, why would anybody ever pitch to you? What battle were you? Uh, I hit second. Why would people pitch to you? Um, I had my little brother hit behind me, so uh, that helped a little bit. He hit. He hit ten home runs. So, uh, and then I I stole thirty bases. So every time I got on, I tried to, I tried to steal. So uh, fortunately, a lot of people um didn't didn't walk me they they let me hit so uh, i thank them so uh, uh, i appreciate <laughs> all trying to compete so uh, but ethan definitely helped ethan kind of put a threat behind me and uh he did he had a great season dude always when you played baseball was it always smooth sailing did you struggle at any point or were you just like a beast from day one um <clears throat> The truth, so, the truth, the truth. Don't come in here. Come in the truth. I got you. Yeah, I'm a, 
up until last year, I hadn't really hit a rough patch. And then um, about the middle of the summer last year, kind of in Port 1, I, uh, I struggled for about two two weeks. And um, I never played, never played that bad in my life. I kind of only had like two, maybe two hits. So um, maybe three. But it was trying to get out of that was definitely um, important for me. Obviously, in baseball, you fail a lot, and um, it's important to learn how to handle failure. And um, my family did a great job of helping me and kind of getting me through that. So, uh, But um, I feel like moving forward, if I can handle failure better than anyone, I'll have a, a very good career. What was the struggle? Were you trying to hit home runs? Were you just not seeing the ball? Um, I was under everything. You could like, look at my bat, and I had like a – little marks on the barrel everywhere and I wouldn't put anything in play. My front side was just coming off the ball, which then my, my hand would drop and I would just come underneath everything. So uh, I was looking to do damage and that's not really who I am as a hitter. I don't strike out a lot and uh, I kind of got out of, out of who I am. So uh, I was trying to get back to that and then all, all high school season, I got back to, to who I am and I was hitting the ball everywhere and um, didn't fail a lot. So uh, <laughs> I, I knew it to do. Bro, when you have the perfect combination, every, unless you're a pitcher, everybody wants a righty throwing dude that hits lefty. Mm -hmm. Did you always grab the bat lefty or did Pops orchestrate that? Um, I always did. So Ethan is the same way. And then my youngest brother is a lefty lefty. So I guess it just kind of, kind of <laughs> ran. So. It's interesting because you guys, it's you have your your bottom hand is your power hand, mm -hmm. right? Does that affect you at all when you do a swing, or you don't even think about that? Uh, I don't think about it. No. Your baseball. I read something that it's always been your obsession, right? Mm -hmm. Has has it always been your thing? Has it been other sports? Has it been video games, or has it always been baseball? Um, the main thing has always been baseball. I. Uh... I played basketball up until up until this year, and I really loved basketball. But uh, everything else has kind of been on the side of baseball. So um, baseball has always been really important to me and my family, and uh, I enjoy fishing too. So, <laughs> what kind of fishing? Um, I really enjoyed deep sea fishing and like intercoastal because we still we lived in Jupiter for eight years, and then we moved to to Oklahoma about. Um, four years ago so uh, i've gotten good at bass fishing so um is that that still water place i hear about uh-huh oh, what's yeah. going on in still water bro um <laughs> not a whole lot just uh just baseball and we just built a, a house so uh, we've been we've been enjoying uh, just 89 hits a year that's all yeah yeah <laughs> that's why you get that's why you got to stay in those places bro you come to miami it's a different story but it's still water <laughs> Yep. So you had a lot of time to focus, bro. Mm -hmm. Did you notice on your production side on a week, obviously you have your team practice and all that stuff. Would you train with a hitting coach? Was Pops good enough that he has patience with you, that you guys have a good relationship? Is that the hitting coach? Talk to me about that. So uh, I didn't, I did online school this year. Um, my school offered a, a, an online course, so I was lucky enough to be able to do that. And uh, I really wanted to, to get stronger and, and focus on my game, so I decided to do that. And uh, every single day I went up to, to OSU and I hit with my dad. We have, a, we have an awesome relationship, so uh, I'm able to do that with him and um, just kind of work at, work at my game every single day. And uh, it, it was very helpful. Jackson, you being the oldest, right, and it's three boys, right? Uh, we, have, we have a sister, too. Yeah. You have a sister. But you're the oldest. Mm-hmm. Bro, you, so you've always been cool with Pops, huh? There's never been a time where, like, dude, I'm the man now, whatever. You've just always been. How How is that? Because usually by your age, especially guys that have done a ton of baseball, bro, they're, like, they don't want to talk to the dad. They don't want to see a baseball, right? Yeah. How, what did he do? What did he do differently? Because I, I don't buy – I mean, I know it helps that you're – You've been in a clubhouse since you were young and you've seen it. Is that the secret? Did he do something different? What do you think is the number one thing, bro, that I could that you could tell a parent that Pops did that that made you be this way? Just how he, he how he handled how he handled everything. Obviously, he knows 
a lot more than me about baseball. He did it for a very long time, so I've always got a person to learn from. So that's always been a good look for me and um, kind of just learning from him. And he was very, very successful. Um, but just how, how he handled how he handled baseball, he never went up or down, rode the highs and lows. Um, he's very, very steady and um, um, was very easy for me. As, as growing up, um, he was never hard on me or anything, kind of just – just loved me and, and cared for me no matter how I played. But uh, we never we never argue. Obviously, he's gotten me to the place that I am. Um, and uh, Ethan, on the other hand, they kind of they kind of butt heads because Ethan thinks he knows everything. So uh, if you ever do this with Ethan, his answer is going to be a little different. Dude, I, I <laughs> because it, I get I get asked that so much, bro. And from watching your personality. I go, I go, damn, this, this guy's just like a cool dude that'll do whatever it takes, you know? But I, I'm almost to the philosophy that since you can't, since you can't control it, buddy, somebody in the PGA Tour suspends 17 golfers for competing. Let's see what happened. Hold on one second. Let's see what happened in the PGA Tour here on ESPN. Bunch of <laughs> golfers got suspended there, Jackson. Oh, really? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if they played in that. I don't know. I don't know if it was that, that, lit, that thing in Saudi Arabia. I don't know what's going on. I've seen that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, dude. I, I get that a lot from, from people. And I've always said that if you take your dad's approach, right, that's the right way. But then now here's the challenge. Your brother comes out completely different, mm -hmm. right? He's like, well, how tall is the brother? He's about 6'3". Six, 6'3", three. Six, three, so he's a big dude, right? So it's almost like eye to eye with Pops, right? So I'm sure that's that guy has it. How does Pop handle him differently that you've noticed that with you? Um, he kind of just lets him do his thing until Ethan asks. I'm more of like, uh, you see anything or can you help me out whenever you, whenever you see something, but Ethan is, Ethan has to ask him. So, uh, Ethan will be very hard headed until, until something's wrong and then he'll ask my dad. But, uh, when, when you were growing up, Jackson, was, was it like, Hey pops, let's go hit. Was he like, Hey Jackson, we're going to go hit. Was it expected that you were going to hit every day? How was that? Um, it's always it's always been me. He's always said that as long as they want to hit, the, that I'll pitch to him. So uh, I've always been the one that, that has wanted to hit. And uh, certain days I won't or I won't want to work out. And he'll uh, he'll definitely get me going. So uh, it's a little bit of both. But um, when I was growing up, it was more of me asking him to, to hit. So uh, Since what age do you remember? Um... I think since I was about one or two, so it's been a while. Dude, that's awesome, bro. When did you start strength training? Um, probably after my sophomore year of high school, I really started kind of working out. I never really done anything, but uh, I really got after it this year. And um, I know it's probably a little late, but uh, after my after my junior year summer, so after I got back from. Jupiter, I started working out like five times a day and uh, I put up, I grew like 80, 80 pounds in every, every category of lifting. You're working out five times a day? Yeah. Or five times a week. Sorry. My bad. Well, dude, I was like, this guy's about to, <laughs> we were about to, <laughs> yeah, bro, no. that'd have been a good one. Jackson, <laughs> five times a day, buddy. We would have shocked the baseball world, bro. <laughs> no, I wish. I wish I had that energy. <laughs> Oh my God, dude! Parrots would have got crazy. They would go, "Wait a minute, five times? Let's do this yeah. online yeah. schooling five times a day. Let's go!" Yeah. yeah. Oh my God, bro! Because I, I see people do strength training, speed and agility stuff with kids at 11, 12, stuff like that. So I always wonder, right? And then with, with, with guys like you that. The advantage you have now is, especially in the last three months, you've really started to pop like big time, right? So anything you say now, it's like now it's like, oh, this is the way. So it's good that at least for a guy like you, that you say, look, I waited to be a sophomore. You know, yeah. I didn't stress it that much, you know? Anything, Jackson, you regret now looking back? I mean, it hasn't been that long, but from Little League to now that you wish you would have done different? Um. 
Not really, not really. Um, I was fortunate enough to play for for a lot of a lot of teams, so I got to meet a lot of people and a lot of different experiences. But um, no, I wouldn't change anything. I got to play in St. Louis, New York, Texas, Florida, pretty much everywhere that, that my dad went. I got to play on a, on a different travel team. So uh, getting to know people is very helpful, and um, and new experiences has definitely helped me to where I am now. When you were young, who would coach you? Was it Pops or was it just a regular coach and Pops would help out? Um, my dad only coached me when uh, I played basketball. So he was my basketball coach when I was like 11. But other than that, uh, he's never been my coach, obviously. He was playing. So uh, it was always just, just a normal dude. It's so funny. So I work with Carmani Boozer, who's Carlos Boozer's son, mm -hmm. and his younger brother, Cam. They're saying he's the best 14 year old of all time. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> he's like six nine. The guy is like shoots threes, dunks it, this, that. He just got a. They just, they won states and he already got a, an offer from Duke and the whole thing. That's where his dad went, obviously. Oh. What in playing basketball? Because I don't know if it's just Latin dudes. We just do boxing, baseball, and like dominoes, bro. <laughs> right. What, what is it about playing other sports? that 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 helps you man because to me baseball seems like a lazy man sport unless like when you're running and stuff what has basketball helped you um i'd say for as far as like speed and agility it, it's helped a lot i mean obviously it's a different different style than baseball but it can definitely help with uh with quickness and like lateral quickness and um that's where that's why i played at the end obviously when i was younger i, I enjoyed I enjoyed playing it more. Um, we weren't as good towards my senior year, so or my junior year. So uh, when I was younger, it's just it's just another way to compete. Obviously, there's a there's a break for baseball players and uh, right. be able to play basketball and, and be able to compete uh, with your friends uh, is is definitely fun and um, it's a different it's a different style of sports for sure. Did I get it? I get it. Your hitting approach this year, right? Mm -hmm. What was it different? than than last year was it the change you made that you said listen i just started to i i always get i'm lefty also mm -hmm. and i always get scared with lefties going to uppercutty because we 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 go under a lot and then that to me I, i don't like it what did you do what adjustment you made was it that that you said that you that you just focus on contact was it that you focused on approach versus pitcher? Would you analyze pitchers? Would you hit on counts? What What did you start to do this year that made you the best hitter in the country? Um, I changed my my load a little bit from the summer. I got back to like kind of a leg kick and, and getting up, getting up early and trying to be on, on time with. Uh, when you say early, when when the pitcher releases, when he where mm -hmm. where are you loading? Um, you know I don't know, but I was just trying to get my leg up <laughs> <laughs> somewhat early. Trying to be able to to be in in a in a good position to hit early, so I can recognize pitches. I feel like if you if you start your load early, then you have more time to see the ball. Mm -hmm. uh, and pitch recognition is a lot easier. And um, I was looking for for pitches to hit. Obviously, in high school, they're not dotting ninety five away, so uh, you can look for pitches in the zone that you can that you can attack so uh, i definitely tried didn't try to chase i was looking to hit the ball over the the second baseman's head just kind of or the short stop said sorry that has always been always been my approach kind of being able to to drive balls the other way didn't didn't miss too much trying to just hit the ball hard and uh, i hate striking out so uh, did you bump at all i didn't bunt no but i would i would take some funny swings to not strike out so uh most of the time I hit like chop over the first baseman's head or like chop over the pitcher and be able to beat it out. So uh, what uh, what bat did you use this year? Uh, I used the Voodoo, um, the one piece, like the 2021, I think. So uh, I got it last year in the 34. And I wasn't strong enough to use it. So uh, I, I used it this year. So you used the 34? Mm-hmm. Yep. Nice, bro. What did you mm -hmm. run in the 60? I ran so at the perfect game national. I think I ran a six six, but I think I had a three a three nine to first this year. So definitely, 
definitely faster to first than I am than I am to sixty. So yeah, speed, yeah, yeah. Speed's very, very. Have you all, so six six? Mm-hmm. Damn. What helped with that? I don't know. I did a lot of sled stuff, kind of just trying to to get a little stronger in my legs. But uh, yeah, I did a lot of sled and and just lifting kind of helped me. I never never really done too much lifting, so whenever I started, it kind of like sparked some some speed and some strength. Jackson, what was the walk up song this year? <laughs> it was uh, one of my favorite movies is Guardians of the Galaxy, and my little brother loves it too. So it was Mr. Blue Sky. Who yeah. sings that? Um, I don't know actually. Mr. Blue Sky. Hopefully, YouTube doesn't demonetize me for this one, bro. Yeah. This. Uh huh. That probably starts maybe like 15 seconds. But yeah, that was it. This was the part that you'd be walking up? Uh huh. And praying at the same time? So why that song? What does that do for you? Um, it's just kind of like a like a fun vibe. So uh, <laughs> I just put that. Shout out to a fun vibe, bro. Yep. I love a fun vibe, dude. Bro, the pressure of you see yourself. Do you go online and you see where you like these things were say you're the number one overall pick, the number three, the number four? The number 7,054, does that ever, like, do you ever go, do you look at that? Do you not look at that? Um, yeah, I, I look at it. it. It's interesting to read. and I, I like to keep up with some of my friends and kind of see where they're at. But, uh, yeah, I look at it. I don't let it let it get to me, though. I kind of just look at it. And, eh, that's not, it's not really the reality yet. So uh, we'll see. But um, it's definitely neat to look at. It's obviously um, the goal of mine to be uh -huh. a top pick and uh it's definitely definitely fun to look at ethan ethan on the other hand he got he got ranked the number one player in his class last oh, night so that guy must be going crazy that yeah, guy must be he, he's very excited he's like is this even real i'm like don't let it <laughs> yeah bro it is by the way whoever edited this thing with you swinging like in the beach and that one uh, yeah. this was a cool thing dude huh pretty sweet huh bro and do you actually stride that long mm-hmm Yep. Damn. Always, you've always strided that long. Yeah, some most of the time. And you keep your hands up though with that stride, huh? I try to keep my head behind behind the ball. So. You finish with one hand or two hands? Um, I think it just depends on the pitch. Really? Mm hmm. Look at that. Bro. Like, I think Tatis does kind of the same thing. Like where if it's down and in, he can kind of two-handed but if it's down in the way he can he can finish with one hand through the ball it's kind of what my dad my dad did yeah 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 bro. I'm, i like one hand finish who's your favorite player is it tatis um i like left-handed hitting short stops kind of tatis is also like unbelievable to watch but who's it uh, like Seager? yeah i like Seager. i like um i like brandon crawford a lot and uh i like trevor's story Trevor Story is kind of a family friend, but um, it's fun to watch too, especially when he's when he's going. Nice, bro. You talked about family friends. You, did you see the question that Jay sent you? All right, Jay, really quick, let's give a little message to our boy Jackson. You haven't seen, you've seen him since he was like a, a baby. What advice you have for him? Anything before we go? And Jax, you already know, dude. Uh, keep working hard, dude. You, get to, you got to see it all the time. You know, you've dreamed big since you were a kid. You always said that, you know, you are going to give yourself a chance to to play baseball for a living, and, and you're doing it. Uh, the one th question I have for you is, who's the swaggiest dude you've ever been around? Yep, who's the most swaggiest player? Go for it. I know Ethan tries to be, so uh, I wouldn't say Ethan, but um, Jay used to be pretty swaggy. He used to have, like, the, the white glove in the outfield whenever we shagged BP. It was, like, a little baby glove. That was pretty sweet. I don't know. I think... Nolan, Nolan Arenado is one, one of my dad's best buddies. So uh, he's pretty swaggy, like sneaky swaggy. But um, I don't know. Hey, he's undercover. He's an undercover. It's so funny. I've had him yeah. on and I've had, his, yeah. I've had his dad on too. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's real interesting because you and him have the same vibe. You know, I'm real good friends with his uncle too. 
it's it's almost like mm -hmm. the game speaks more than the person mm -hmm. like your game speaks more than the vibe of the person and until people confuse you unless they see you in a the game they're like oh this guy's like chill but that competitiveness is so i'll take that bro i, mm -hmm. I like that jackson i bro i'm i'm so happy for you man i i hope that this whole process for you, you enjoy it. I know you're still super young to get this kind of thing. Cause I don't even think what round did pops going? Cause pops went to college though, right? Uh, -uh. so my dad was uh, a really high recruit in football too. Like right. My number three quarterback in the country or something like that. So super, super good at football. So they didn't, he was going to get drafted in the first round and then, Stuff about football came out, and he dropped, I think, seventh, maybe? Seventh round? But, mm hmm So, so you're like here. This is, this is a big thing for you, man. I, like I said, I wish you Godspeed, bro, with, with your, that you enjoy the moment, that you savor it, that you try to, even for yourself, not even to put it up on social, but that you document it, you know, so you enjoy it. So, dude, 20 years from now, that you look at this, you're like, you're like, man, this, this, that was crazy that I did that. That was crazy that I had my hair like that. That was crazy. <laughs> you know, cause that's, people don't think about that, you know, cause the time flies. And when I was talking to Jay, you know, I was like, bro, it's just crazy. He's already retired. He's now he's announcing games and it's just, it, it flies, dude. Before I let you go, bro. Question for me, anything I can help you with. Who's the most interesting person that you've done one of these with? The one that I like the best, man, and it is has to be Logan Paul. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you why. Because as I'm talking to him, he goes to me. He goes, dude, I, I, was, uh, I was smart. I had straight A's in college, but I doubted myself a little bit, and I could have came out sooner to the content world. And I go to him, I go, bro, I don't know how, how much bigger could do you want to be, right? Jackson, yeah. this was 20. 20 right before covid it was jake's first fight it was jake's uh first fight against anderson gibb like a second boxing fight and he goes to me he goes dude i got i got so much more i can do and i go what more can you do since then this dude fought floyd mayweather <laughs> he started uh an nft project that's crushing it he started his energy drink with ksi that's just crazy right so i'd have to give it to him bro being yeah. and, he's, and he's 26 mm -hmm. he's doing well yeah he's doing well and the brother's doing well and they've just created their own thing man you know so dude that's how i give it to him man where are for the draft you're gonna be here in florida or you're gonna go back to stillwater uh we'll be we'll be in stillwater we uh might as well use that that house we built buddy i one day i'm gonna go to stillwater mm -hmm. i'm gonna watch you there bro we're gonna take some hacks we're gonna do something i've never been to Oklahoma. Yep. So um, <laughs> got quite a quite a project out there. We got like wolf ball field, basketball, pickleball, anything nice. you can think of. Yeah, nice. Maybe I talk to Jay. See if I can convince him we go out there, bro. Yeah, he's, a, he's he's in St. Louis, so I'm gonna talk to him. See if we uh -huh. do like something to get some cotton going. That'd Boom. be awesome. You're the best, bro. Wish you the best. If you've made it this far, first of all, thank you so much. Like the video. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed comment because coach hp is going to get to the comments he's going to take care of you okay dm him he answers all his dms the guy is on it but again if you made it this far thank you so much we love you we are out